the temple curtain. Herod the Great had me made, according to the pattern of the curtain of Solomon's temple, to hang between the Holy of Holies and the inner room. Once a year only can the High Priest pass behind me without danger into the Holy Presence of God. I am six inches thick and twice if not more the height of any man, coloured and woven from the fruits of the earth. And every day when he, the Son of God, came, I longed to fall down before him and fling myself aside for him. I longed to add my voice to his protest at the desecration of this place by centuries of commercial disobedience. Today I am uneasy. I can feel the Holy Presence pacing behind me. Jesus is not here today. He is elsewhere. There is a tightness and a tension in this place of God's peace. The air is saturated with dread. Something cataclysmic is about to happen. It is dark in the middle of the day and I hear his cry rippling out from the hill outside Jerusalem. Here it comes. The entire temple quivers and shakes. Huge holy hands take my higher edge and rip me apart in one swift movement from top to bottom. Who can approach the Holy of Holies now? Is it anyone? Joseph's Cave I am part of an outcrop that has been here for millions of years. Created millions of years before that by the slow accretion of particles at the bottom of a warm sea. That's how he did it. God, I mean. Around here, the rocks like me have been used as tombs for time out of mind. Natural caves, well, almost with a bit of human tinkering. I was recently acquired by a rich merchant, putting aside a last resting place for himself. He'd installed a slab and put a circular stone outside, but I didn't think he'd be needing them just yet. He looked in good shape to me. I'll be left in peace for a good bit longer, or so I thought. You never know what's round the corner, do you? I saw Joseph, my owner, much sooner than expected. Not dead, but burdened with someone else who was. Someone I almost recognised, very bloody and battered. Joseph, a friend of some women, came and made the body tidy. Close wrapping with linen, a turban on the head, the usual thing. They brought spices too, and many more than you'd expect for an ordinary fellow who'd been crucified. And I still couldn't shake off the feeling that I knew him of old. They closed me up with the stone locked into its custom-made groove. Absolutely unopenable. Pitch black inside, except for, well I can't tell you that, not tonight, anyway. The Stone You may think of me as a bit of an awkward customer, and you'd be right. I haven't always looked like this, you know. It took a good deal of battering, cutting and cursing to get me to cooperate. The stone cutters won in the end. I was all for resenting it. When I heard that I was a special order, paid for by for one of those most respected people in Jerusalem, I saw myself differently. I'm special and chosen and important, I thought. I didn't know just how important until years later when they started writing books about this whole 
amazing story. You've heard the cave and others speak, so there's no need for me to repeat their words. However, there was something extra I witnessed before the main event. God had been sent to protect the tomb of the King of the Jews, and one of them propped himself against me, muttering under his breath. He seemed angry, but also nervous. I listened to him carefully. Never been asked to do anything like this before. What a waste of time, what an insult. The man is dead. The soldiers saw to that. They are expert executioners and look at the size of this massive stone. No way can he get out of there. End of story. But it is a bit too quiet for my liking and the air is very still. I feel unfamiliar fear in my guts, as if the ground is turning beneath me. They'll come and relieve us in the morning, but somehow that thought doesn't reassure me. He was all of a sweat, that soldier, and given what happened next, he had every right to be. Our final hymn, and can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood? <laughs> 